Wow, is it my birthday? Man, this is definitely all one noodle, man. Look at how much trouble we're having right now. But I'm telling you, this feels pop. Say what's up to him in the back. L-I-C is nice and is clean. What more do you need to say? Thai iced tea. The New York Times just called Long Island City the new Asia town, citing the huge Asian population increase and all the stores and restaurants that opened up in the past few years. We had to see what all the hype was about. This was our first trip ever to LIC and we're starting off at Yumpling, a Taiwanese fast casual owned by our friends Chris and Howie that opened up just two years ago, but was a pioneer in the LIC Asian food game. Starting off our LIC crawl, we're here at Yumplings. Yumplings was started by two Taiwanese and a Korean friend. So the three buddies came together, they created this spot. It's mostly based around Taiwanese dishes. All right, let's start with the beef noodle soup, the near old man. Now that tastes pretty good. That's pretty authentic, man. You know, I think a lot of people tend to believe that when spots are started by like Taiwanese Americans or Chinese Americans or Asian Americans, it's not gonna have the same like authentic flavor, but man, this is good. And the beef shank is really soft. Look at that. Mm. All right, let's check out their Taiwanese guo tie. Now, as you can see, guys, maybe the shape looks more like a Chinese style, but then the fact that they have all the sauce and the fresh cilantro and onions on top, that's very Taiwanese. Taiwanese guo tie. Mm. All the sauce, fresh cilantro, and onions just like the Taiwanese do. Here's their fried chicken sandwich. They fry it in the Taiwanese manner, kind of like a ji-pai. Here you have fresh basil leaves, you have a basil aioli and a potato bun. Man, you know, at the end of the day, they still are American, so you know, you wanna bring some Americanized items. One thing you will notice about a lot of fried Taiwanese chicken sandwiches is that the chicken patty is way bigger than the bun, twice the size. Here, one of my favorite dishes of all time, Sa Jiang Mian. You got a little oil on top, ooh. I've never met anybody who didn't like the fried sauce noodles, AKA Sa Jiang Mian. Yo, just like I'm building the Taipei Railroad system, here I got the lunch box, fried chicken on top of rice with a little bit of pork meat sauce on the bottom. And you know what also goes really well with fried chicken? Beer, Taiwanese beer, great flavor. I've never had this flavor, but I've had Taiwanese beer before. It's like 40% grape juice, 60% beer, I like it. Yumplings is really cool because, you know, unlike it being a chain that is ported over from Taiwan or China, you know, this is a homegrown Asian American business and it's still serving pretty authentic recipes and they're making it accessible and appealing to all types of people. You know, as I've been in here, obviously Asians have come through, but a lot of non-Asians have. And I think that's really cool. You need spots like this and they are securing their spot in the LIC Asian boom. So shout out to them. What do you think about LIC kind of becoming this 2022 Chinatown, they say, you know? Uh, you I what I'm saying, right? Yeah, yeah, I've definitely seen the, the change happening. It's happening really fast, actually, like literally over the past year, um, you know, just right across the street, you know, there are places popping up, all like Asian food, drinks, desserts. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's really exciting to see. All right, guys, we got a long LIC video today. We're gonna hit up multiple spots, so I need a power up, and I'm gonna go to Chunyang, which is one of the premier Taiwanese boba brands from Taiwan. I'm gonna grab something real quick and then come back. Toffee cheese cocoa latte. Whoa. Yo, that top layer was like this thick, cheesy caramel cream, and then it hits you with the hotness of like the, the cocoa. That was a crazy drink. I did not expect that. Here I got the Zengzi Oolong Xian Nai. I'm sorry, I'm working on my Mandarin, but this is a ginger latte. Mmm, very gingery. They told me to turn up the sugar so that it could balance out with the ginger spice. Hopefully it wakes me up. That's like eating one of those ginger candies that are wrapped up in plastic and you just like stuffed it in a drink. Where would you rank Chunyang of the boba brands from Taiwan? Like what ranking is it? Of course, number one. <laughs> All right, everybody, I gotta tell you, if you see a Chunyang open up in your neighborhood, it means that there is a sizable Taiwanese and Chinese population, and not just Asian American, not just Chinese American, like they're probably from China or Taiwan, just because this is a pretty traditional spot. Listen, I got a ginger oolong, and I got like a, 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 a toffee coca, coca latte, all right? This one's pretty traditional. So, you know, it says a lot about LIC and how it's changing. 
All right, you guys, I've got to admit, Long Island City, in some ways, Andrew, feels like Asian parts of like downtown Toronto, mm. because we are just in a space right now that you would never get in the city. We're like in a industrial garage that has been converted into like a noodle craft shop. Yeah, and it's gigantic, and they actually have a mixture of different styles of like kind of the Chinese diaspora here. They have some Singaporean influence. Obviously, they have the Lanzo fresh handmade noodles, and then you also have like a lot of Taiwanese influence as well. Yeah, this is actually a Yopo Mian. This is a uh, scallion oil noodle, but I added the shrimp to it, so it's almost got some vibes of a, like a uh, more fresh like Tanzai Mian from Shanghai. Oh man, this is definitely all one noodle, man. Look at how much trouble we're having right now. All right, you guys, I just gotta go in. At Noodlecraft, they also have dim sum. Like we said, one of the owners is from Guangzhou, so you're seeing more, you know, obviously the Cantonese influence. So dim sum, laksa, and dan dan mian, and Sichuan nu mian all in the same spot. Would you say that appearance-wise, this almost looks more like a Japanese shumai, which is like lighter color, maybe less pork, obviously than the traditional Cantonese one? You're right, because and of Japanese, they really like seafood. Mm. Their shumais are mostly shrimp and that is a pure shrimp one. I hope to see more like authentic like Chinese or different like, you know, origins of Chinese food. I feel like it needs more diversity. Um, yes, I would. All right, one of the things I noticed about being in Long Island City is that a lot of the owners are young, whether they're from Asia or they're Asian American, and that just leads it to have a different vibe, to be it honest. It does, it does. And you know, people love that heritage, like rustic vibe that Manhattan has, or throwback. But I'm telling you, this feels pop. Hey, I'm trying to get this mango coconut sago, or this matcha red bean, or the black tea boba. Which one are we getting? I don't know, they all look great. All right, guys, we're here at Taste Cream. What they specialize in is mixing Asian flavors with Western items. Andrew, that's a lychee rose cake. This is an Earl Grey blueberry one. Obviously. This is not necessarily Asian in the sense of like it being Earl Grey, but the cake is really soft. The frosting, Andrew, everybody knows Asian frosting has a like lighter weight and lighter density to it. And here I have the lychee rose. Obviously rose is kind of floral, fragrant, uh, you know, popular in Thailand and Indonesia. I'm telling you guys, this blueberry Earl Grey is a 10 out of 10, mm. absolute banger. Come support people who are taking risks, mixing Asian flavors, fusing them with Western items. Over here, we've got a hoji cha cookie, Andrew. You've got a black sesame cookie. These are super soft. The black sesame flavor is super strong in here. Imagine a peanut butter cookie, but just flip with black sesame flavoring. That's how good it is. Oh my gosh, what is this? This is a lychee raspberry rose lemonade. Andrew, wow. this is for you because you had the lychee rose cake. Oh my gosh. I have the matching drinking cake. Wow, is it my birthday? Oh, seriously. Ooh, nice and tart, citrusy. Taste cream. Check it out. LIC Jackson Ave. Say what's up to him in the back. Hey. Um, I mean, there's a lot of diversity in the food. Um, whatever you can find in Manhattan, you can basically find it here. But there's only like one of each restaurant almost. There's an appeal to how safe the neighborhood is. It, it does have the feel of Manhattan, but it's in Queens too. And it's a very nice community. It's in, there's a nice the parks here and then a variety of restaurants too. Oh, okay. But I want to move here. <laughs> All right, you guys, we're here with Danny, the owner of this location at El Milky or I Milky. I Milky. What makes I Milky different? Because I'm assuming you guys got good milk. Yeah. So what, my, what makes I Milky different from other bubble tea shops is that we use fresh farm milk. Um, and also our tea leaves are handpicked and it gets imported from Taiwan. All right, you guys, let's try it out. I Milky. LIC is like sort of a brand new part of New York. And you know what I like? It's because for me, I'm a little bit, tiny bit lactose. So I got the oat milk option. This is good. What can you tell us about this community? Because a lot of people are like, you know, if you, you live in Manhattan, you might not know. Yeah, I think LIC, it's definitely a growing community. A more modernized flushing for sure. Um, however, I do feel like flushing, it's still always going to be like a, uh, like home. You know what I mean? All right, right now we are outside of the newest Asian food hall in Long Island City. It's connected to the Five Points uh, condos, and I'm sure you know a lot of the people here who live in this area will come here. It's mostly Asian, brand new, opened up about four months ago. Let's check it out. All right, we got our mala shangguo. It's kind of like a Sichuan stir fry. A lot of people really like mala shangguo, even Westerners, even non-Chinese, they like it because it's a little bit less heavy way to get the Sichuan flavor. You know, you don't have to have uh, the big Sichuan hot pot with all the oil and stuff like that. There's oil, but not like a ton, you know? Here we have uh, a lot of tofu skins. We have the deep fried 
flash fried potatoes, we have the fish filet, we have the beef here, you got bok choy, you got some enoki mushrooms, you got the spam, let's go. Voila, ABC Daniel, absolute better cooking, mala shangwa. Fish filet and enoki mushroom. Mmm. Honestly, this little hidden gem that just opened is kind of cool. You could come here, study, get some Sichuan food, get some boba, get some poke, chill out. It's nice, it's clean, it's warm. Blasting sea pop. Shout out to ABC Eats. Andrew, the American equivalent of what Chinese people love to eat mala shanguo in is people wanting to eat like Texas or Memphis smoked baby back ribs inside of a contemporary modern art museum. That's a statement. One thing that makes LIC feel really like a mini city next to the city is the density of high rises. Our friend Shandy from Brooklyn now lives in Five Points, so we had to get a tour and hear why he loves living in LIC so much. Yo, what up? Shandy. Hey, what's up, dude? Homie from Grand Street Park. Um, now you're living here in Five Points, this new building. Obviously, it replaced the old Five Points. Um, man, what can you tell us about living in LIC? Um, I think it's a nice balance between like not having to live in the city, but at the same time, you get the, the same vibe. A lot of folks that are from the city kind of moved to LIC. I think in the next few years, there's gonna be a lot of like flushing restaurants here. Um, I feel like the crowd is great. Everybody's like super chill. If you want a nice, semi-quiet Asian life in the city, LIC. LIC. There we go. All right, Shandy, behind us is Court Square Diner. This sort of represents old LIC, right? Because this has probably been here for like 50 years. All this stuff around us has been here for like five years. I mean, what, what do you know about it? Um, I know this is where everybody usually hang out after like they go party and stuff. Their, their food is pretty good. It's kind of nice. It's like got that nostalgia feeling even though I wasn't like living in the 50s, but. All right, you guys, if you can have all those luxury Asian high rises in LIC, you got to have some kawaii anime karaoke stuff. Let's check out this Tesco. Okay, you guys, we've got the Ken drink, the Chun Li, the Majin Buu, the Vegeta. For me, I think I got to go with this, the Chun Li and the Majin Buu. Yo, D, what did you get? All right, I'll tell you this. That is more Asian than anything in Manhattan. <laughs> All right, I got the Majin Buu Ocean Bomb peach flavor. Got the Ken Sparkling Tea peach flavor. It's Chun-Li, right? Oh, you're right, man. I had the Chun-Li one. It's an official Asian enclave when there's a Paris back in. I've never oh, seen this Domino before. All right, guys, as you know, we are technically in Queens, nearby Elmhurst. They actually have a Thai food truck this is very rare to find, especially in the city. You'll never see a Thai food truck. Oh my goodness, they're food making truck. it fresh. They got the fresh brew Thai iced tea. Okay, so so they have uh, pad kor pao, you know, Thai sausage fried, Thai sausage fried rice. Oh, I'm tempted, but I can't do it. Do you like Long Island City? Yeah. This area? Yeah. What do you like about it? I think the people. People are nice and it's clean, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Hey, you guys heard it here. L I C is nice and it's clean. What more do you need to say? Thai iced tea. All right, our next spot in LIC is called Cuckoo Kachu. Uh, the owners are from China, but they wanted to open a modern chicken spot. Now, I do think spots like this do kind of exist in the big cities in China, like Shanghai, for example. Um, so I'm interested to see their twist on Western chicken and waffles, chicken and fries, chicken sandwiches. All right, everybody, in my hand, I have their newest item. This is the Gua Gua chicken sandwich. I thought Gua meant like Gua Bao, like something Chinese, but it actually just stands for guacamole. So you got Gua Gua at Cuckoo's. Man, that's a lot. That is actually fresh guacamole right there. Yeah, you can see those pieces of avocado. All right, guys, uh, let's check it out, man. This is a Chinese fried chicken sandwich. Um, as you can see, uh, there is only chicken thigh, as it should be with any good chicken sandwich. Um, it definitely reminds me of the... Uh, McDonald's chicken filet sandwich from out there, you know, because like we always talk about the Asian fast food chicken sandwiches out there are to be honest, better, they're tastier. So man, shout out to them. And they're doing a whole bunch of other stuff. They got like chicken and waffles and all these other dishes and they're just trying to do something new, but but uh, w with a twist. If the McShanghai from China could work in the States um, and blend in even with other flavors and it goes to show you that it can because pretty much they took the Chinese chicken sandwich from McDonald's and then they put on guacamole and it's good. Yo, they got the whole 88 rising playlist. Just come out and check out Cuckoo's. In my opinion, like this place is like exploding. Like we are all like 
doing like great here. So like this is definitely gonna be a new like Asian town. All right, you guys, we have to end this edition of our LIC food crawl, Andrew, at the building, Jackson Park, that sort of like, I want to say, sparked this whole Asia boom, Asia town boom of LIC. I mean, once this thing went up and this many Asians moved in, guys, I think everybody else knew that they had to open up at least a food cart, if not a restaurant. And this is one of the food carts right here, Guanbing, China Guanbing. They got full on dishes here. We got to do the Peking duck one. Andrew, look at the photo. Yo, I actually, yo, can <laughs> Can we get, the can we get one uh, uh, Beijing Kao Ya and can I get the classic Kao Lung Mian? The Kao Lung Mian is a street food from Northern China that the first time I had it was in Beijing like six, seven years ago. There's only one or two spots in the US that I've ever seen it at. This is one of them. David, that's a Guanbing. It's like a thin scallion pancake. It's thin like a Jianbing, but maybe material wise more like a scallion pancake. I give it a four. All right. Overall, we got to see the basis for a modern Asia Town 2.0 being laid down. I think over the next five to 10 to 20 years, you're gonna see something really, really special come to life. And considering you're only 15 minutes from the city and Brooklyn and 20 minutes from Flushing, it's got the location to grow. I mean, who knows? Maybe in a few years when I wanna start a family, even I move to LIC. What do you think? All right, everybody, that wraps it up for our Asian LIC video part one. Let us know in the comments down below if you would ever move to LIC. And number two, let us know if we missed any spots that we need to hit up next time. Guys, Long Island City, it's really my first time going around, scooting around, checking out the neighborhood. It's cool. I see why people move here.